We're joined by the giggling gourmet Jenny Morris as we make a herby steamed bread with spinach, a lamb stew with butternut, and two tasty tarts for dessert. Remember to head over to our website if you want any details for any of the recipes that we're making today. But back in the loft is celebrity chef Jenny Morris, who recently suffered the tragic loss of her husband due to COVID-19. She joins us this evening to chat about her way of dealing with the grief and how she's continuing his legacy by doing what she loves best, which is cooking up a storm with us in the kitchen. Jenny, welcome back to the show. It's so great to be in your loft. <laughs> it is. You know, Jenny, I feel like, you know, one of those family members that every single time you come back, we just pick up where we left off. It feels like no time has passed, but so much has happened since we last saw you, Jenny. <sighs> Our deepest condolences um, to you and the entire Morris family. We lost a soldier. We did indeed. He was my general. He was my colonel. What's the highest rank you can get? Yeah. That was him. <laughs> And I think, you know, I just, whenever I think of David and everything that he was, not only to you, but even us here on Afternoon mm. Express, he's already just sorely missed. I mean, let's go back to that. In June, um, he contracted COVID-19. We got it together. Talk to us about that. We did everything together, darling, <laughs> even COVID. You know what, it, it was frightening because we didn't even know we had it. And, and this is the thing with this disease, you can't ignore certain signs. David always had um, sinus. So he just thought, oh, I got a bad case of sinus. I always have headaches, you know, because mm. my neck always jumps out. Um, and I thought, oh, well, you know, I need to go and see the chiropractor. And we had been exposed to it. And, and, and when we found out we had been exposed to it, um, we quickly phoned the hospital, knew on someone there, they said, wait five days, you know, and we were fine. Wow. And we thought, well, we're gonna be the lucky ones. And um, we had the test and on day six, oh my goodness, that was like, <laughs> everything hit the fan, mm. literally. It was bad, it was really, really bad. So then going through this, um, not only just feeling ill yourself, but watching your husband slowly but surely get weaker, mm -hmm. slowly starting to um, deteriorate in terms of his strength and all the capabilities, what then happens to you um, in wife mode? Well, do you know what happens in wife mode? I think your instinct is to nurture and to take care of. I'm gonna get a bit emotional here, so just bear with me. It's understandable. Um, but what happens is, you, as a wife, you feel absolutely hopeless. All you can do is speak to the people, and I have to say, and I'd like to mention the hospital, if I may, Christian Barnard Memorial Hospital, were the most incredible people. Um, their staff, you have to appreciate the nurses and what they do. You know, it's one thing to say, oh, I had an operation, they were good to me. These people are working in the worst conditions with COVID, et cetera, et cetera. And, he was in intensive care. By the time we got to the hospital, um, they immediately, he, his, his organs had started to collapse. I mean, his kidneys had failed and COVID loves, it just loves organs. Mm. It played havoc, you know, with his heart. I mean, he died eventually of a, a stroke. 40% of his brain was absolutely gone. But the whole time, fortunately, thank God for technology, because we had our cell phones. So between our wards, we were in hospital at the same time, uh, we would talk. And then one day there was nothing. You know, and I thought, oh, his battery has gone flat. And it was just terrible because they'd put him on a ventilator. Mm. Jenny, it seems impossible to be able to pick up the pieces from there. David was not only your best friend, not only your lover, not only your husband, but he was your business partner. Yes. Um, a lot of, in fact, I can almost say <laughs> everything you accomplished in your career was with David by your side. Uh -huh. So then how were you then able to pick up the pieces and continue Business as unusual? As, uh, yeah, well, business always with David, it was always business as usual. We never put our cell phones off ever, you know. And the thing is, like you say, he, he didn't like the limelight, but he was always the light behind me. Yeah. And, um, well, business partners, 39 wonderful years together, you make plans. You know, you think about the future, you plan ahead, and you know what you want. Mm. And obviously, all of this was in place, and I'm a strong woman, he would tell you. <laughs> And I just, I just thought I'm gonna pick up these pieces and just put this puzzle together. It's horrible to try and take something that's shattered mm. and fix it, but I must fix it. And here and you are. I am, and I miss him and, and I feel the loss um, and I'm sad, but I'm not depressed. Okay. Because I'm doing everything I know he would want me to carry on and do, so yeah.
Oh, shout out to David <laughs> and his incredible memory and his legacy. But moving then to where we find ourselves today. I mean, you have had such an incredible career. Radio shows, TV shows, um, half a dozen recipe books. Um, you are basically a woman who is just a phenomenon. You're a force <laughs> to be reckoned with on your own. So what is there to be said by commitment, sticking to something, keeping focus, and just trusting yourself? How are you able to achieve such greatness? You know what? Um, I, growing up, my father always said, start the way you're going to finish. And uh -huh. if you start something, you've got to finish it. Um, so I will never take on more than I can chew, although I'm a greedy girl, if you look at me. <laughs> but when it comes to delivering the goods, um, I always say, and this is just a message to anybody out there, is do what you do and do it properly. Don't take on more than you can handle. And this is what I'm doing. I'm just taking on what I can chew, you know. So whether it's um, taking on a project or whatever it is, um, and, and just do it properly. I think that also, you know, I'm already taking notes because for someone like me who is relatively new in the industry, longevity is everything. I mean, you're hot one day, you're not the next, but someone like you, it seems like you're hot every day. No, I'm not just talking about your looks, girl. My no, menopause. <laughs> You see, it's that sense of humor I think that people just find so <laughs> infectious. I think whenever you hang around, Jenny, you just can't help but laugh and smile. And that laughter and all that smiling is going to be brought into the kitchen a little later. I mean, can you tell us a little bit about what you've got planned? What, in the kitchen or uh -huh. going forward? Well, we're going to get to going forward towards the end of the show. We've got to give South Africa something to look forward to, you know. So stay tuned for finding out uh, what Jenny's going to be getting into when we... I think we're wrapping up 2021. Crazy. Yes, but I'm um, in the kitchen for now. Oh, for now? Well, there's some deliciousness happening in that kitchen. And if you look at all those foods, it's all about heritage. And I know that for every single person out there, there's going to be something that just pulls at your heartstrings, just makes you remember that these are all beautiful foods uh, that we're going to cook with wonderful memories attached to it. And you mentioned tarts and you mentioned beautiful steamed bread. I love pot bread. Yeah. Um, and, and lovely stews, hearty mm -hmm. stews. Yeah. I'm fino. That's me. You know me. I'm fino. I'm fino. <laughs> I know my girl. Yeah. <laughs> well, Jenny, it's just such a blessing to not only be able to sit down with you today, but also to celebrate heritage with you as you are just such a very strong part of not only Cordova culture, but also us here at Afternoon Express.